how to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant and this is part 19. Finishing the fire hole door latch, fitting the wet steam pipe and making the blower. In this clip I'm using a centre drill to just spot the positions for a couple of holes required to hold the latch in place onto the main fire hole door assembly. And now I'm drilling the holes in the fire hole door assembly to take the bolts. Ideally I would have liked to have used 10BA bolts for this job but unfortunately I do not have a 10BA tap, I've broken them all. So instead I'm drilling these holes to take 8BA bolts because I can cope with those. I don't break 8BA taps, it's just these 10BA ones I have a problem with things that are that small. So I'm going along the 8BA route to fasten the catch to the main assembly. And I'm going to use some of this for starters. Loctite 603, my favourite. I'm using the Loctite 603 to temporarily stick the latch to the main assembly. That way I can drill the holes in the latch, or at least spot the holes in the latch in the correct position. I don't think this is going to be too strong a bond because it's a very small part. The larger the surface area, the stronger the bond. And to be fair, because I was making a video, I didn't leave it really long enough to cure. But it worked anyway. And while the Loctite 603 was doing its stuff, I had to machine the heads of these 7BA bolts so they fitted together in this small space. And in order to give the 603 even more time to set, I used some of this Brasso wadding to polish up the fire hole door. I try not to go too mad with polishing, it looks all very well as you do it, but as I intend to run this boiler, the brass is going to get hot and it's going to tarnish. In order to make the latch a good mechanical fit, I'm using a 6BA bolt and a couple of brass washers, and that way I can tighten up the latch but it will be free to move. And as the brass washer, is holding the latch away from the fire hole door, then there is no chance of the latch itself scratching the front of the fire hole door when it's been operated. It is, however, not enough just to have a bolt through the door, washers or not. It needs a lock nut on the other side to hold it in place, and without this lock nut, the bolt would move around all the time and it would eventually work loose and fall out. The procedure with two spanners is to tighten the bolt, have a feel at the latch, and then once the latch is feeling really good, with no appreciable play, I just tighten the lock nut on the back of the door. And having a lock nut on the back means I'll be able to adjust the fire hole door latch to take up any play that may develop over time. I've just noticed that around the rivets there is still some residue from my polishing spindle. If I remember, I will clean it off before I finally finish the boiler. And there comes a time when you have to fit your fire hole door to the fire hole door assembly. And as you can see, I've shaped the latch and it looks quite good. The pin needs tapping into position and my tool of choice for doing this is a 13th century knight's axe. And once again, using my full complement of two small barco spanners, I fit the nuts and tighten them against each other. The fire hole door assembly is complete. And the latch opens and the door opens. What more can a man want? Well, I can actually think of one or two things, but I won't go into that now. This fire hole door assembly that I've made, the brass one, doesn't want to be a really tight fit into the original copper fire hole in the boiler itself. It just needs to be a snug fit. Originally, I used a knurling tool on this part to make it grip the copper, and that's just about all it does. I can pull it out quite easily, it's not a massive tight fit, but it sits in place quite snugly. Also, of course, I do need to remove this part to disassemble the boiler. And my aim was to make this part removable by hand pressure only, should I ever need to do so. So that's it for this part. One fire hole door complete with a nice looking latch that opens and shuts as well as it looks. Some viewers must be thinking, I wonder what he's going to do about the bottom copper part of the boiler. Well, I've been thinking about that myself. For now there are still other jobs to be done, so I'll move on to the next one. This is the blower pipe, freshly silver soldered and ready to fit to the boiler. And just in case some viewers are not sure what a blower's for, on a coal fired boiler the steam blower is used to draw the fire when the engine is not running. When the engine is running, the blast of the exhaust of course draws the fire, but this fine jet of steam from the blower draws the fire whenever the engine is not running. And this blower pipe has been a right pain to fit, but it will look good at the end. Getting the bend right was just difficult. I had to anneal the copper three times in order to keep it soft so I could bend it to shape. 
And just in case you don't know what annealing is, copper work hardens. The more you bend it, the harder it gets. And it will, of course, fracture. So what you do is you heat it to a cherry red or a bright red and then let it cool to black, followed by quenching in some water. And this softens the copper to allow you to bend it again. And you can do this quite a few times. I don't know how many times exactly you'd be able to do it. Quite a lot, I would think. But anyway, it finally gets bent to the correct shape and the union nut fits perfectly. Moving on now, I think it's time to give the chimney some more polishing treatment. I use the polishing spindle to give it a really good hard polish and now I'm using some Brasso wadding to just finish it off. I really do like this Brasso wadding. It's very easy to use. It's been around for many, many years and I can fully recommend using it. I think all the work I've done on this piece of copper pipe, cleaning it up, because it was badly marked, is worth the effort. Once it tarnishes, it will look really nice. Once I fire this boiler, and this copper chimney is subjected to great heat, it will change colour and look really nice. Then it will continue to change colour and not look very good, but as it just unplugs from the chimney mounting, it's very easy to clean it. This next job is another piping event, and I'm bending a piece of copper pipe to take the wet steam from the steam tap into the inlet of the superheater. This of course, as I mentioned before, is not a proper superheater because it does not go through down into the fire. It's just like a coil that gets very hot. So it's really a steam dryer. I've mentioned in quite a few of my other videos problems with steam engines related to superheat. One problem is, if the superheat is excessive, it can carbonise the oil, and the oil ceases to become a lubricant. And high superheat is only really suitable for steam engines with cylinders that are made out of cast iron. Steam engines with gunmetal cylinders, or even worse, brass cylinders, would suffer if the superheat was too high. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.